Hello and welcome. This is the Futro Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I am your host, Ty Christensen. I'm joined by this guy, Jordan Christensen. That guy. <laughs> you know what Jack Burton always says. Ah, what the heck. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm joined by Karen Mickle. Sub nerds. And newcomer, first time on the podcast, the one and only, the fabulously bearded Colton Hurley. Hold on, I'm talking to the wife now. <laughs> Sorry, here I am. I'll sit down a second. Are you sitting over here? And his wife. <laughs> This is the most awkward intro I think I've ever done. But uh, yeah, we're here. We're excited to be here. <laughs> Woo! And of course, Tess Hurley. The number one, uh, the popcorn catcher. Number one in your hearts, Tess. <laughs> here, Tess. You know. Hello, my adoring fans. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yes, welcome. We got a powerhouse couple here. Um, it is so delightful to have you two on the show talking about a movie that's very near and dear to all of us here on the podcast. Well, at least, at least all the regulars. I don't know about you new newcomers, <laughs> but we are reviewing a very special movie called Oh No, Big Trouble in Little China, 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 China. Big Trouble in Little China, Big China, Big China, Big Troubles in Little China. <laughs> oh, what can I say about this film? Uh, Jordan, why don't you give a plot synopsis? Because last time I forgot to do that. Do well, you have it? I can sum it up real quick. There's oh, some big yeah. troubles in Little China, and uh, those get solved. <laughs> That's a pretty good movie. Yes. I've got the plot synopsis if you want, Jordan. I can go. A rough and tumble uh, trucker helps rescue his friend's fiance from an, ex, uh, from an ancient sorcerer and the supernatural battle beneath Chinatown. This movie came out in 1986. It was directed by John Carpenter. This is our second John Carpenter film. We reviewed the thing earlier. This, uh, uh, the writers, Gary Goldman and David Z. Weinstein. And there was one more credit. Uh, W.D. Richard uh, made the adaptation. So it stars Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, Dennis Dunn, James Hong, my boy James Hong. David Lopin, um, Victor Wong, <laughs> Kate Burton, Donna Lee, Carter Wong, Peter Kwong, James Pax, Susie Pai, and many others. So, we are going to go around, say what was it like watching this movie for the first time, and what was it like rewatching it for this podcast. Uh, I guess I could start. I gave it some thought. I don't remember the first time that I saw this movie. This is one of those ones I, I was exposed to when I was very, very young. So I just thought that all movies were like this. This is just how movies are. Goodness. And this just became a personal and very important part of my identity. But I realized not a lot of films are like this. In fact, uh, not a lot of them even try to be anything like this. <laughs> it's quite an identity. You set the bar pretty high, John Carpenter. Yes, yes, he did. And... Uh, yeah, there's things in this movie that I'm still baffled by. I watched it again last night, and I, I think, just when I think I understand it, there's, like, a scene where I'm like, I didn't even know this was in the same movie every time I see it. And oh it's not even been that long since I last saw it, but I'm like, oh, this is in that movie, this scene, that because I can't get these images out of my head. So um, this movie is really fun, and it's even more fun to rewatch, and it's especially fun to share it with people that haven't seen it. It's just, it's just <laughs> one of those like baffling movies. So I'm really excited to talk about it here. Um, Jordan, let's start with you. Uh, what was it like watching it for the first time and rewatching it? Um, yeah, I can't honestly remember the first time I saw it. Uh, I just remember loving it, and yeah, thinking this is what cinema is. <laughs> also, <laughs> but good cinema. Yeah, but I, I do remember watching it with the... I don't know, this wasn't one I really pushed on people as much as I did, like, The Burbs. Uh, I kind of wish I did. Oh, The Burbs. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I don't even remember that one. That feels like a fever dream. Yeah, we watched that watching with these the guys. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, should, we should have some context. Colton and, and, and basically Tess were roommates of ours, so we pretty much watched... All these movies together, and which is why we're having you on the podcast. Yeah, my this my movie. my favorite was making uh, them watch uh, um, Army of Darkness, and both 
Like Colton and Tessa's reactions were complete opposites. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember no. exactly what my reaction was, but I know I wasn't enthusiastic <laughs> she wasn't about thrilled. it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I don't know what the what is there not relatable about a guy that has a chainsaw for an arm? I don't understand <laughs> yeah. this. For don't you people get it? He's the most relatable and accessible character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, and that's funny because honestly, it was because we reviewed Army of Darkness last week that I thought we need to have Colt. Yes. And that's who if, I thought of. If his wife is willing, Tess. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> it, it would be harder to land Tess, then it would be easier to get Colton. I'm like, Colton will be down for it, but maybe Tess will be a harder sell. But I went back and forth. Te- I really did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we were watching it, I was like, you know what? This is exactly the kind of movie that I would expect Ty and Jordan to be into. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, again, true. we're glad to be here. It's nice to reconnect, whether it's just if you're using us for your podcast, whatever. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We want to. We want to use your powerful social media presence, and you guys got oh to force yeah. this podcast onto all of your family, and then it will just like grow my six friends who are also your six friends, because uh, like <laughs> yeah. can we use this moment to plug absolutely nothing because neither one of us has well, an online presence at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so funny because I was thinking, I was like, you know what we're going to have to do is like, the, the, our mutual six friends, they've all been clamoring to be on the podcast. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll have you on. And then I'm like, uh, could you make sure that I have Colton's right number? Because I want him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> like, before me? And I'm like, well, yes, yes, because we're discussing a movie that's very important that I want Colton on. Anyway, I just, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we've lost plenty of friendships that way. Cameron, what was it like watching this movie? For the first time and rewatching it for the pod. Um, I, I remember watching like some scenes from it growing up, but I remember mom or dad always watching, walking in like, oh, what the freak? Can't be watching this, and just because of like how weird it is. And then I think the first time I ever watched it all the way through was after my mission. I think it was a couple, I think like a month or two ago, and boy. I did not remember that show. This is the one of the weirdest <laughs> movies I've ever seen in my entire life. This is like on par with Swiss Army Man, Good Burger, all of those shows. I was just like, oh, the right. entire time I was just questioning, like, <laughs> how did this make it out of production? <laughs> <laughs> How does this get the green light from producers and uh, directors? <laughs> but overall, a really good experience. It's definitely an experience watching it. Yeah, I loved, after the first time you saw it, you sent me an image of the guy right before he exploded, you know, his face. You're like, what <laughs> am I watching? I love that. <sighs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So many questionable Incredible scenes. Man. It's hilarious. Love it. Uh. Love it. All right, uh, Colton. Let's do. All right. Well, I'm kind of with like uh, Cameron. Like, I saw this a long time ago when I was like six, and I just remember even back then going like, "What the heck <laughs> you know, is going on?" <laughs> you know. And we actually we watched this right before this, so we, we like did. put it on watched, like an hour before we this, like half an hour ago. So just it's so it was really fresh. Oh. And again, it's fresh. What the heck? Like this movie is <laughs> so <laughs> crazy. It, there's just, I mean, I it's love it because it's a different movie every watch. I know it's just so, it's so random and crazy <laughs> and like, I mean, maybe it's because I've never been to Chinatown, but I don't know what the heck is going on and who's the street gangs yeah, and like yeah. why is there a floating eyeball and like who's the werewolf guy? Like, there's like no backstory on the werewolf guy. He just shows up. And it's just hey, like that's it's the werewolf from Ninja, 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 Ninja Turtles. <laughs> It's the most trippy wild ride yes, ever. Yes, Cameron. Yes. Yeah, it's it's the werewolf from he's, Teenage he's Mutant from Ninja Turtles. Secret of the Ooze. Yeah, right. Yes, right before. Right before Vanilla the Ice does the Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. <laughs> 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 they, they replaced yeah, Beatbox and Rocksteady with like the this monster of a thing. That's uh, what it it totally had that. Yeah, the the legend or the I'm... Secret of the Ooze vibe. <laughs> I just want to know what was like when Kurt Russell read the script. Like, did he ever at one point be like, "Yeah, this is a good movie. Like, I want to do this." Probably, this is, probably when he discovered, <laughs> like, <laughs> probably when he discovered that his character would be wearing uh, that tank top oh, and yes. jeans. Man, that's oh, how you know it's gosh. serious. You know, once. <laughs> 
and the righteous mullet. That's that was the selling point, you know. All right, but well, we should get Tess. What's your opinion? I need your opinion. Tess, what was it like? Yeah, watching. So Tess, what was it like watching the first time? Which, if I'm not mistaken, that was today. Yeah, yeah. it was. Right. It was yeah. actually. I was actually. I wrote down some notes because well, towards the beginning of the movie, I wrote down some notes because I'd never seen it before, and I was very confused by the movie, and I was like, hold on. <laughs> If I can't even remember, what, like, if I don't even understand what happened in the movie, how am I supposed to talk about this? So I had a couple questions that I wrote down from the beginning. First of all, I noticed that the actor from Tremors was in there. The the little guy in the beginning, the the Asian guy in the beginning. I don't know what his name is. Oh, yeah. He was from Tremors, anyway. He got eaten by one of the Tremors, so I knew it was going to be good. <laughs> Not that important, I guess. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was a titular really? character, Wait, but was I that, have no idea what his name was. Was that Dennis Dunn's character, Wing Chi, the, the guy that's looking for his girl? Or which, no, which no, guy no, are you no. talking it about? It was the old guy. There's a few Asians hey, in this one. Are you the, old about- guy's <laughs> the old guy who was throwing diamonds at people and they're blowing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, you're talking about uh, the electric. Well, he uses electricity. Yeah, at the very beginning. Hands, yes, in the yeah. beginning. But he yes. never uses He's his powers again. Like, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Egg. I, I, I want uh, yeah. What's his name? I, I was thinking. I, I wish I had that um, when I was in Argentina on my mission. Like when people are like, "Well, how do you explain faith or something?" And I wish I could just like hold up my hands and just like. Because <laughs> <laughs> like the guy was, you, you know, understand. I love that opening scene. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he he. I actually remember him from the Three Ninjas. Do you guys remember that campy movie? The Three, <laughs> the three ninja. Ninjas. No, I've never seen. Oh, the he three was ninjas. in the Three Ninjas. He, he's That's the right. uncle. He's the uncle of these like three little boys. Well, inexplicably, he's the uncle of three white children, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 he like trains them and raises them, and they're they're like kids that. It's it's basically like a coming of age movie. It's like a much cornier about white uh, ninjas, Karate Kid, or <laughs> but as it, if Karate Kid yeah, wasn't corny it, to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. It's it's like full blown cheesy. Like a kid's one of the kids' his name is Tum Tum. His thing is like the kid eats a lot. <laughs> like he's like this porky little ninja kid. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, but he's the <laughs> uncle in that. And inexplicably for these kids, that's where I remember him from. But that's so funny that you mentioned Tremors because I haven't seen Tremors in a long time. We need to do yeah, Tremors on the pod. Character. That's oh, great. Yeah. Played oh, by Victor yeah. Wong. If you guys right. ever do he Tremors, that's I am so, so there for it. Him. Okay. That's true. I watched Tremors yes. about yes, four dozen sure. times in my childhood, so I could talk about that movie for days. If I <laughs> yeah, Ca- to. Cameron's the favorite part. The cinematic masterpiece he... that was Tremors. <laughs> yes, Cameron's favorite part was yeah. at the very. I mean, after it ran into the wall, and then he's like, "F you." <laughs> it's the best scene. Oh. Yes, oh yes. Um, so good. And then I guess what, another question. I mean, this was a this was a marginal point, but in the beginning, who is he talking to on that CB radio? Because nobody's responding to him. He just keeps like, yeah. chatting into the void. I, I, I think I think Jack Burton is either being like. Uh, I think he's just either recording these as like voice memos to himself, or <laughs> he's or trying to sell. He's just audiobook. sending it out. That's yeah, he's just se- he he's the original yeah. podcaster, right? He's on the like, wrong frequency. Literally... Nobody's even listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just loves to hear the sound of his own voice. You know, he's yeah. oh, it's so good. And mind you, I'm going to get into that monologue that he delivers because it's probably one of my favorite things. Oh, actually. so good. Okay. Dude, oh, Kurt, Kurt Russell reminds me a lot of your guys' dad of Ridge. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. He so does much. very much. Not only in looks, but even some personality. Personality-wise, you know, yeah. It's for weird. Sure, for sure. <laughs> dad, here's looking at you, man. We reviewed this movie. You're, you're the star of this movie. If you want to envision what our dad looks like, imagine Mel Gibson meets Kurt Russell, mash their faces together, and that's that's our father Mel right Gibson there. Mel Gibson and Kurt Russell. It freaks me out. Well, it freaks me out because I've watched movies with, like, like with Mel Gibson, and I'm like, Dad? It's <laughs> really Daddy? weird. It's really weird. Father. It's like super crazy. Well, okay, so we you have lots of questions, Tess. We, we're going to get all of them. Yeah, we them. actually have a nitpick section for you. Do you have any first impressions? Do you have, yeah, oh, do you have any first impressions perhaps? Yeah. yeah. I we'll admit it was it was hard to hear the movie because we were eating chips. <laughs> so we, so we, missed, we didn't miss a lot. <laughs> I could not hear anything. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. We we uh, watched Tenet, and I remember Grant mentioning when he came on, he's like, "Well, 
I wasn't really paying attention because there was all this talking and boring stuff at the beginning. I'm like, oh, you mean like the, the plot exposition where you learn about the characters <laughs> and what they're doing and what the motives for everyone is? Like, oh, that, that stuff, yeah, you missed that, that yes. and you were confused by the movie? <laughs> oh, I'm surprised that that happened. But yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I actually, so, for so the, chips. my nitpick <laughs> section, Ty, I only had one question yeah. and then literally they answered it a couple minutes later. I'm like, oh, this movie's perfect. <laughs> this movie's perfect, yeah. I had one question. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into two of our favorite things from this movie. Um, so we're going to give it to Tess first. <laughs> Say two of your favorite things from this film. They can be anything ranging from just a scene or a character or whatever. Just or two a of costume. Your favorite things from this film. <laughs> or a line. Um, the makeup, yeah, the makeup, definitely. The makeup department had their work cut out for them in this <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And I guess the other thing... I. I mean, in the beginning, it was just hard for me to get into because I had no idea what was going on. But I looked up, I'll admit, I cheated just a little bit. And I looked up, like, the wiki plot as it was going just so I could, like, read it over to make sure that I was following along all right. To follow the story. Yeah, yes, exactly. Because yes. I knew I was missing stuff. But, um, so towards the end, I, th I started to think that it was getting pretty funny. Um, you know, kind of like making fun of itself a little bit because in the... Towards the beginning of the movie, I was like, oh, this is just another one of those corny action flicks where, you know, people are in, like, tank tops the whole time and they're a little bit sweaty and, like, every, you know, there's, like, unexplained sexual tension between the lead characters. But towards the end, it's, it That's seemed right. like they were, like, making fun of themselves a little bit. So I liked that. I liked that part of the movie. So. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. How about you, Colton? Two of your favorite things oh, from this film. Mine are probably two favorite lines. One when they're just knocking on that painting, like, it's hollow. And she's like, it's hollow. F it. It just starts, like, slashing the painting for like, no reason. It's just, like, it's just so out of nowhere. Just, like, the like, yeah, Just the and I did. I love it so at the end funny. when it's like we build up. Oh, here's the love interest, and then they're like, "Oh, are you gonna kiss oh, her yeah. goodbye?" And he's like, yeah. "Nope." <laughs> just like, just, like, <laughs> just, like, <laughs> like, what was the point of all? Of, like, the whole movie's defeated in like one line. <laughs> well, and I don't think I don't think Yao Min ever said one word throughout That's the whole movie. That's true. Do you I don't, guys remember her talking? Because I don't. I don't think she says anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, the, the, the Miao Yin, yeah, the, yeah, the, the green uh, uh, Asian girl. No, I think her. I think her uh, whole point was that she had green eyes, whether <laughs> whether <or> not. <laughs> they were actually her eyes and not color contacts. Who knows? But yeah, it's so funny. I said, there's just some um, great one-liners in there. It's just the writing was so excellent. Great. It needed an award, hands down. For sure, for sure. Somebody get this man an award. Uh, Cameron, what was it? For, what are the two favorite things for you? Um, honestly, one of my favorite <laughs> things about it, which also like made me like, what the freak is just like how, like, I don't know, unpredictable the film was. I literally could not predict the next scene. Like, even if I had a million dollars, like, like the next scene, I'm like, okay, I can like, I, like I can kind of see where the plot's going, and then it just like whips in some random magic dude with like long nails, and I'm like, what the freak am I watching? Mm -hmm. And then my second favorite thing, um, honestly, is probably the love story. I laughed so hard at the part when he refused to kiss her. I was like. <laughs> The entire show was building up to it, and he just, like, did not care. And I literally started, like, dying laughing. I was like, how? Like, why? I have so many questions. Uh, You're just... not even going to kiss her? Bro, no. he can't be nope. tied down like that. Yeah. Like, like, he's, 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 a, he's a truck, uh, what's called, a, a semi-driver with very much, like, so much potential that he doesn't need to be tied down, tied down by some woman. He goes where the road takes him. <laughs> He's so weird. That's oh my right. gosh. Oh, I do have to say, I have a third point, but the fact that he does the entire final like fight scene with the main bad guy with just a bunch of lipstick on, you know, like it's just so great. Oh, <laughs> it looks like I know it's so it's it's perfect. It's just yes. perfect. Yeah, it's so good. That's so great. Um. Okay, Jordan, how about you? Two of your favorite things. Um, oh, easily, my first thing is Kurt Russell. He steals this show. I mean, maybe you were going to go into that type, but he is the best part about this movie. Um, so I mean, every... Make or break. Yes, every line he delivers is perfect. Uh, I mean, yes, it was an amazing script, but given to him, just... I don't know if anybody else could have done it besides Bruce Campbell, but it's just... His attitude towards everything and how he delivers the lines is so good. 
I, I, I want to. I'm glad you brought that up, Jordan, because I'm going to pose the question after we go around and say our two favorite things: whether you would choose Bruce Campbell and Evil Dead over Kurt Russell and Big Trouble in Little China. Well, the only reason I choose Army of Darkness, Bruce uh, Campbell, is because it, that's the one I recommend. Like when we do movie nights, that's the first one I I pick. It's just. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I mean, that's... I don't know, because, like, to me, I, I mean, Kurt Russell carries baggage, because I also think of him from The Thing, and I'm thinking, like, this guy, like, uh, he's a pretty, pretty invaluable asset to have on your team. But anyway, I love that discussion. I'll have to ask everybody else what they think. Tess, uh, Colton, have you guys seen The, uh, the Thing or, or know anything about the movie The Thing? I know. I know a lot of it. I, I've seen parts of the original I've never actually okay. seen the whole thing because that was one of those now, ones that my parents never let right. us watch. So if you were facing either like some creature horror or something like that or inexplicable magic like in this movie, would you rather take Ash from the Evil Dead, the chainsaw wielding a- Ash, or would you rather take Kurt Russell? Yeah, and- a oh. simple answer. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some sugar, baby. I can't beat that. I mean, come yes. on, it's the king. <laughs> so wait, that doesn't the answer king. the question, though. Would you rather take him on? Yeah, I'm taking guy? him. The only thing that this guy actually does is hit the guy in the head with a knife. But if you all the other scenes, he like shoots the ceiling and it well, like no, he knocks, like, knocks him himself out. out or like drops his knife somewhere while his comrade does all the fighting <laughs> for him. <laughs> not, not only does he do it, but he actually. He he catches a knife that's thrown at him and then proceeds to throw it back. Yeah, but that's it's a two thousand year old Asian okay? man. He's probably pretty weak. And doesn't he He's, catch no, it? No, but like you know what's crazy. First? You know what's crazy is <laughs> only only Kurt Russell's character would have done this. Jack Burton is the only person that would have been naive enough to believe that he could kill him. So he throws the knife and misses horribly the first time. And then, and then and then he proceeds to throw the knife out of catches it midair and throws it right back and kills it. He ends the curse. He ends the I rule know. of low pound. <laughs> like, like it's him. It's it's Jack Burton that does it. I'm just saying he brought down a very evil force. Look, whole and I army get that. I result. hear you, but the fact that he missed so horribly the first time proves it was all a giant accident. <laughs> <laughs> By the like, way, listen, when he misses he succeeded, and then throws his head is... back, he's like, oh, <laughs> yes, that look such of such a like, great scene. Oh. When he like, like, oh, I can't believe I missed. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, Jordan, uh, your second favorite thing. I cut you off. Uh, no, you're good. Um, well, the lines, uh, obviously. I mean, that goes along with Kurt Russell, but every line in this movie is unbelievable because everyone else had amazing lines too. I mean, obviously, except I, did, I totally forgot the girl with the green eyes said nothing, but uh, everyone else that had lines was really good. Like, even hey, the reporter. Green eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she might say something. I'm going to laugh. Does she have any lines no, whatsoever? No, I don't remember. Don't think so. Also, we are convinced she's not Asian. Like, she I mean, looked, all you're the honest, she's not now, even Native American. That's just a young, right. that's a young Elizabeth right. Warren no, no, right no, no, there no. with those cheekbones. I mean, come on. My guess is Filipina. <laughs> she was Filipina or like oh. Eurasian, but she was not Chinese. Uh, okay, but disclaimer, I did look this up because I had to know. Asian uh, Asian women can have green eyes. I didn't know this, but it's like from certain areas of China or Asia or whatever. I, yeah. Like I know anything, but like I, I just had to look that up because they said like gr- Asian girls do not come with green eyes. They keep saying that in the film, and they're like, she's very special because she has green eyes. Again, uh, it is unique to some parts of, of China. Yeah. I just thought that was kind of cool. Well, so, the anyway. have you guys? Do you guys know um, Memoirs of a Geisha? I have heard of that, and I know somewhat about it, but I, I've never seen it. But. Well, that's that's just part of the plot of Memoirs of a Geisha, is that she's someone born with um, blue eyes instead of the normal dark eyes. And I don't know if this is necessarily... Uh-huh. I don't know how accurate this is, but they talk about how, like, in Chinese folklore or whatever, um, if you're born with, like, green or blue eyes, that means there's an imbalance of elements in your body, and it means you have, wow. like, too much water in, in your like as far as the balance of element, you know the, like the earth wind fire water it means you have like an imbalance you have you have too much water in you or something and that's why your eyes come out light or something like that i don't know how accurate i'm being here but that's something that memoirs of a geisha mentions i mean she's so. a bender she's a firebender what the mm. she is the last <laughs> airbender well with blue eyes she's probably a water bender but you know <laughs> Just, I, I don't know enough about Susie Pye that plays Mao Yin, but I do realize oh. that she was born in Ohio, so how about that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it could be. I have no idea what her nationality was, but I mean, again, 
she has so little to do with the she's like the MacGuffin. You just got to get the girl back, right? So does she have any lines? No. She's like <laughs> basically just the object of desire for our character, you know, Wang Chi to get his girl back, right? And she's taken. She's in distress. She's, she did the part just fine. I didn't think anything of it. Um, I'm going to say my two favorite things from this film is the imagery. There are some images and characters, whether it's like the makeup or the practical effects or even the special effects. Like, I cannot get out of my head. Like, you mentioned the floating eyeball. The, there's this disembodied head with like hundreds of eyeballs all over it and I'll never get that image out of my head there's a terrifying looking troll monster that uh, that comes out three times in the movie great ending by the way um and and <laughs> the this imagery and okay so that that's one of them and then secondly are like the the punches and the fighting is actually really good if you like the the martial arts in film the kung fu, karate, whatever it is they're using in this, it's really good. <laughs> oh. the, the punches land, and in fact, in some instances, they have someone's arm, and they like proceed to <laughs> punch through it, and it just dislocates their arm. And you see it in all its Dude, glory, and it's so gross. Though, where they look like they're fighting about half speed on a bridge, and just like the most like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yes. fantastic. And then there's some there's impressive acrobatics when when Wing Chi's character is fighting either lightning or rain. I think it's rain, right? Where they're flying through the air. Yeah. Well, and they're like, like where did that fighting come with from? swords. That was exciting. <laughs> like okay. So my second favorite thing of this entire film is a scene in which all of the characters take the special juice. Oh, yes. It's called steroids, right? We don't know what it is. So it'll, it'll make them empowered. It'll give them confidence to see things that they wouldn't, they'd be more open to seeing things that they wouldn't understand, right? It's like, I don't know if it's drugs, it's, it's something, right? So so they all proceed to get into this elevator and they're all, they're all standing there and then they all like kind of look at each other and they're like, <laughs> Oh yeah. I have a really positive feeling about this whole thing. It's like, yeah. Scared at all. I'm not even scared at all. <laughs> I feel I feel kind of invincible. <laughs> it's just like they're all like signaling the 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 sign to each other. It's like a loser sign. <laughs> like um Oh, that scene is my favorite. And then at the very end, they're just like, they're all kind of awkward st awkwardly standing there, and he's just like, is it getting kind of hot in here? <laughs> Get me out of this elevator. So funny. Uh, just, I love that scene. I, it's so funny. That scene is very funny to me. So, uh, two of our least favorite things. We can go around. Nitpick Anything you section, think of, though. just shout it out. Yeah, nitpick section. Uh, I'd love to hear, Tess, you probably had some more questions written down. I love hearing your, your questions. I don't know. I guess one of my, one of the things that bugged me about the movie is that it was just, if, it was hard to process what was going on before they were on to the next thing, on, on to the next fight scene or whatever. So I guess and it was just hard to understand sometimes as a first time watcher, but maybe that's because I was taking it too seriously and I was trying too hard to like remember every detail. Um, it might not be one of those kind of movies where you're really supposed to remember like what what's happening from scene to scene. <laughs> no. I, as long as you understand like the general plot, you're going to be okay. But it was hard to to process what was happening before they were on to the next thing. Um, and then I I guess I don't know. Oh, probably Gracie Law was my other least favorite part of the movie because she was supposed to be you know the smart lawyer. She's all brains. <laughs> And yet she's sticking her head into weird holes and she's, you know, <laughs> confronting the boss when she has, like, she has nowhere to retreat to. She has no weapon. She has no, like, she's in no position to be negotiating. And she's like, you're never going to get away with this. We'll just see what happens to you. And it's like, shut up. You, <laughs> shut up. You're so stupid. So she was probably my other least favorite part of the movie. And it was kind of satisfying when uh. she didn't get that. That kiss at the end. Yeah, but remember, so she like, says. I would have come to the same conclusion. Like, you're cute, but. <laughs> remember, she you're says her pen dumb. is more powerful than the sword, so. Well, I thought that was Margot, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. Margot. Partner. Margot was a favorite was her, for me. Her, 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 her yeah, she. To the job. That's right. That's right. Poor Margot. And she's like, wow, I must have been so naive. And he's like, you are. <laughs> Oh, yes, great. and Grace oh. is always oh. sticking her nose in where it doesn't belong. She was not, she was not my favorite. So, probably yeah. my two least favorite things. What are the I things I noticed? Uh, oh, go ahead, Colton. Oh, when so when he goes into the White Tiger to first kind of try to find the girl, were you guys not getting some serious Chris Farley vibes with the glasses and the whole like, oh, you know, just <laughs> rolled in from yes. you know, Minnesota and like. 
<laughs> he said it was like it was like a skinny Chris Farley. It was great. It was. It was really funny to see him acting out of his element, like like playing this nerd character with thick glasses. Like, yeah, you know, I, price is no option. <laughs> it did remind me a lot of Chris Farley. On SNL, know, yeah, like, or just at all. That's really funny. Yeah, just like an SNL character. Right? It was such a character inside this movie. That whole scene. Um, or, yeah, or reminded I, me I of Harrison say, Ford from Blade they, Runner when he was doing that weird voice. Like, they always do these weird characters when they're trying to be undercover, you know? <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know what's so funny? So I never understood this. Uh, but, like, the, the three characters that are, like, immortal, right? One of my favorite things is, like, they're, so they're, I found out their names are Lightning, Rain, and Thunder. See, I, I knew their powers, but I didn't realize what Carter Wong's character, who ends up inflating somewhat, he does it once, and Jack Burton has his arms around him and is trying to, like, restrain him, and then he bursts out, right, of, of the, the hold he's got him in because he inflates a little bit, and it kind of throws him for a loop. And at the end, he sees his boss dead, and he just proceeds to, like, get so angry, he inflates and inflates and just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just self. It just explodes like inexplicably. And I don't know why, but it makes for such a great. I don't know why he did that. I, <laughs> I know. Guess so <laughs> <No sense. laughs> uh, there's oh, there's so much great imagery when they all introduce themselves. Like Jack Burton, he's just like, "Floor it, go through him," and he and he's like, "Okay," and he presses on the gas, and then like all of them are standing in the way in that alley, and then they all just sidestep the van, and then lightning or rain, I don't know who's standing there at the end. He's like, "Ah!" He gets launched <laughs> over the truck. <laughs> It's so funny. And then and then Lopan is there. Lopan is like right in front of him and then he's like, look at and then he just hits him. He like proceeds to hit him. You actually see him get hit with the semi. And then he's like walks by, around behind the semi and then all of a sudden he starts like blinding them with his eyes and then his mouth. It's I have no idea what's going on. You're right. I don't know to the extent of what their powers do. I don't well, understand but, what their motives are. It's so but great. The best, like, the you're best, kept in the dark. The best part, though, is every time something like that happens, somebody quickly explains, like, as soon as he's like, ah, oh, my eyes, it's like, it's okay, it'll wear off. Like, really quickly, people <laughs> say things like, it's okay, audience, like, we got this. People, people have been blinded <laughs> before by this guy. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah. It's, apparently it's a back alley know, puddle water, water, you know, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah throws, throws, like, dirty, yeah, distilled water, or, like, like <laughs> resting water there in his eyes, yeah. like, oh, my gosh, so gross. Uh, yeah um yeah that is so great and again what i really like about it though is that you are kept in the dark and i like how everyone else in the movie knows what's going on except jack and and even gracie you know law's character like they're outsiders that come into this world and there's like th everyone else this is just like legends right like they know about all of lopan they know about all of his evil they know about the the thunder rain and lightning guys they know they're immortal they they fear them these rival gangs even knew that they were there and they knew how powerful they were. They got, like, they even, they were fighting each other, but they stopped when the three I, immortals I was going to ask Ty, because so. he was talking about all those different, like, religions and all these different wise uh, tales. He said, he said to the guy, and I heard this expression again when I was watching Day of the Dead. He said, he's like, formulas, equations, you're giving me a lot of Greek salad. Is that just, it, and they said that again in this movie. He's like, it's a lot of Greek salad. Is that like, say, is, is Greek salad just have, like, a lot of stuff in it. Is that why they say that? Is that an expression <laughs> back in the day that I haven't heard of? I was curious. I, I, I know nothing about Greek salad. I don't even remember that line. Okay. <laughs> That's funny that you mentioned that. That slipped me. Right? Okay. That slipped right past me. Did anyone else catch that? Nope, that's so that's one of those that went like right um, over, I, I guess. That. Okay, I was just curious. Uh, let's see. Right, must have missed that one. That's so funny, though. Uh, other, other things, like, uh, again, inexplicably... Egg Shen, at the very beginning, he's talking to, I'm guessing, like, is he talking to a policeman? Like, right? Like, yeah, policeman or something. <laughs> so was he arrested? Yeah, was he arrested? Like, who was... Yeah, he didn't do anything. Like, why was he arrested? Like, or I, I'm assuming he was being interrogated, right? They were asking him, and then all of a sudden he goes, well, you won't believe me, and then he, like, does lightning between his hands, and he, he never does anything like that again, <laughs> except with the amulet right at the end, which... It's so great, by the way, when Lopan and Egg Shen are fighting, they're like pushing the oh stone at gosh. each other. And Lopan just does this thing where he's like playing like a video game with <laughs> joysticks with his thumbs. So funny. Did that remind so you of Scott like, Pilgrim at all time when they're like playing the guitars yes, and the creatures yeah, are fighting? Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. That same imagery invoked that. I was like, dude, I wonder if Edgar Wright had any inspiration drawn from Car John Carpenter. I'm sure he did because he grew up watching films, but I, I love that. I think it's so funny. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the nitpicks are really just funny things about this thing. Like, like characters inexplicably die, too. Like, like not how you expect them to die, right? Obviously, the guy that blew up. But the lightning guy, he's flying at that wing. <laughs> he's just like, yeah! And then he just, like, <laughs> turns around, throws his sword back to the air, and cuts him in the stomach. Uh, uh. <laughs> he just keeps flying. watching. And then he keeps <laughs> flying. <laughs> And flies into the skull opening or, or into the wall and just blows a hole through the wall. Like, cartoonishly almost. Yeah, it reminded um, me of, like, Pokemon, was... like, Team Rocket. Like, them blasting, right, right, blasting yes. off again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then, uh, so there's that one. And then even, like, the lightning guy, right? He's, like, coming up through the archway. And he's, like, <laughs> shooting lightning everywhere. And then just rocks just, like... He's <laughs> dropping a statue on his head. I know. <laughs> <laughs> They throw this rock at uh, this big stone type uh, stone statue on his head, and it's just like, well, there it is. He's dead. It's so funny. And then, and then the eyeball creature, right? It's like his eye, like it's for Lopan. He can see everything, right, and communicate through this eyeball thing. And then all of a sudden, like, he's like, he's like thinking to to Lopan. Lopan is alerted to their presence, and they just proceed to stab the thing. <laughs> it just like. Uh, <laughs> Just goes <laughs> like, like it's all the deaths in this movie are absolutely absurd, so absurd and so insane. amazing. The, um, oh, that, that's so one of my great. like the only truly nitpick I had was like the entire movie is like super mellow, especially for PG thirteen. But there were just some horrifying images that like kind of like I think Tyre Jordan mentioned. I can never get out of my head just like like watching the film like what the fuck just be right on. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 watching someone's hand get bent backwards, like their elbows cracking and stuff, that is so nasty. And Even if it's monsters, like through a rope. The monsters right, and the dude's right. nails. Do the dude's nails make me cringe every single time? <laughs> well, how about when he was he like tickling the girl's nails neck. on his pinkle? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, Jess. <laughs> Jess, you said it best. Coke nails, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, yeah. It's just the pinkies, too. It's yes. just the pinkies that are long. Oh, uh, one of my favorite lines is also um, not just a line, but the scene where, again, I don't know if this is a nitpick or not, but it's like the the the, the legend of, of green eyes, right? And then he finds Gracie Law and she just happens to have green eyes, so he's just like, Lopin's like, what could this mean? I will marry both women. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy's this guy, this guy's more polygamous than a fundamentalist Mormon. Like seriously, like I'll just marry both of them, I guess. And then like they both survived the challenges and and that was the other thing. There was one nitpick I had. How did Grace get our Gracie, her character, how did she get out of this spell? Originally, yes. she was like standing there, and her eyes pop open. She like she was snapped totally out of it. She was totally fine, and she's like trying to get Mao Yin's attention. Like, let's get out of here. And then she like closes her eyes again, and then when you see her open her eyes, they're like white. So she's like under full spell. Lightning spelling. guy came did... in, dude, and redid the magic. So he redid the Reset voodoo. The yeah, exactly. I thought it was I thought it was gonna be like a get out where he like she has like stuff stuff in her ears or whatever, but nope, it was right. just inexplicable. <laughs> my well, okay. Here's my other question nitpick again if this yes. guy is some like age old e eons old incredible sorcerer or whatever from ancient china why does he limit his sorcery and power to some back alley in chinatown of san francisco <laughs> <laughs> he's taking over the entire u.s with these powers he's like down in somebody's like you know like you can hear like somebody's toilet flushing above them he's like in the basement in san francisco somewhere and he could be taking over the entire u.s with those kinds yeah. of powers supposedly so well he's he has to he has to be wedded to a girl with green eyes i don't know <laughs> and then his whole well, power will be why does it have uh, to be in man, chinatown but... like can he just go to china and look at the chinese girl with Do green you have eyes to, like believe in the magic to be under his spell because that's that's severely limiting in and of itself <laughs> is ruined he started monologuing it's a classic mistake <laughs> I, I, exactly exactly you come monologuing you sly dog okay here we go we're gonna do two or quote or no excuse me who gets the academy award uh, that's it, obviously that's kurt russell yeah hands down not even a competition kurt russell kind of a dead giveaway yeah on that one. i mean yeah I, yeah I'll, I'll give it to we, her. i mean he's definitely i think that movie to the fails table. so hard without him oh yes 100 percent yes yeah, he does. He does bring it all together. You kind of are along for the ride. You're the conduit as an audience member. You can kind of go along with this, and 
It's baffling at times. Well, he brings a little bit of sanity to this insane story. Yes. Yes, because he, again, he is the audience where he's like, what the (laughs) is going on here? Like, come on, I I just ran through a six-foot roadblock, you know, Lopan, and oh my gosh, it's so great. Like, he does voice, like, actual concerns because he seems to be grounded in the real world. Everything that he's known is now inverted and and flipped on its side, and everyone around him is telling him, like, yeah, do you not know the legends? Like, (laughs) what? (laughs) Like, I guess everyone knows knows about it except right. me like it's crazy so um uh let's see uh who gets the razzie i actually like what you said to us about the character uh mel yin not having any lines <laughs> like could she, does she have the worst part in this i don't know you also had a few issues with kim cattrall uh or cattrall uh gracie law's character so i don't know who who wins the razzie the worst actor for this film oh. i guess it depends on whether gracie Law. like again because towards the end of the movie you feel like they're starting to laugh at themselves a little bit. So is it like, is it supposed to be some kind of like, like we say that she's smart, but we realize that she's actually pretty dumb and that's like part of the joke of the movie? Or was she supposed to come off as smart and she was actually coming off as dumb? Because like if she was, if she was intentionally, (laughs) you know, acting stupid, then I guess it was some good acting, but. I don't know. In in my opinion, I think it's kind of similar to a Hayden Christensen situation where like the actor does a really good job at being annoying so a lot of people kind of will characterize that character as annoying (laughs) so i mean i don't like i feel like with that good of a director of john carpenter i feel like he wouldn't let something like that crucial kind of slide under the thing of like her not doing a good job so i think Mm -hmm. like that was definitely his design to have her be such an annoying character because i kind of feel like kurt russell like demonstrates and like embodies everything that is kind of like bad a and just like he like he's very like he, he's very human but yeah he like it's almost like his his like courage is like supernatural or superhuman but then like she's just like supposed to be better than him in every way because he's just like a random truck driver but yet he is like so much better than her so i thought that was kind of like the personification of like low i don't know courage versus like intelligence no, well, I'm yeah, so- and he was oh, clearly sorry. over here over her by the end too so maybe he was just as <laughs> underwhelmed by her character development to the rest of us right? <laughs> exactly um, Cameron uh, I'm glad you said he's like the bad a character he totally reminds me of um, Peter Quill like um, he yeah. he even has the same line as Peter Quill when he goes he's like you know what Jack Burton always says and he's like who's Jack Burton and he's like yeah. I am <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Who? Me. Yeah. Star-Lord. Star-Lord. Who? Who? Right. So we can all admit that Chris Pratt is a freaking hack, right? Oh, geez. Here we go. <laughs> what a loser that man is. Okay. Anyway. Um, yes. Kurt Russell did it better. Let's just put it that way. And uh, by the way, he's totally his father. So took it from him, right? Later. Sequel. Oh. Right? Guardians of the Galaxy. Right? That's Isn't true. that Kurt Russell's character? So, oh, I was not a fan of took Kurt it Russell's from him, character man. in Guardians of the Galaxy. Hey, I thought he was good. When, when you said... Him. Kurt Russell did it better, Ty. He totally reminds me of, he's like, David Blaine did it better in that, that parody. I can't remember. <laughs> Anyways. What was that from? That does sound right. Um, okay, was that a human giant? Or no, no, no. no. That, that was, giant, uh, was that the, oh. if you look up David Blaine parody on That YouTube. was the best mouse I've ever seen. I've seen a crap ton of magic. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to do, um, okay, where are we doing? We're doing best. No quotes. Worst. Best lines. Uh, quotes. Quotes, most quotable lines from this movie. I wrote down like uh, a and billion. there are many. But I'll just <laughs> say a couple. There's so many good ones. That's like impossible. Okay. One of my two of my favorite, right? So my first one is when some wild eyed, eight foot tall maniac grabs your neck, taps the back of your favorite head up against the bathroom wall. He looks at you crooked in the eye and asks you if you paid your dues. Just stare that big sucker right back in the eye. And you remember what old Jack Burton always <laughs> says at a time like that. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir. The check is in the mail. <laughs> like freaking greatest monologue ever like again this is him talking in the in the the radio to some frequency no one's listening to it it's so great i just love that yes sir i have paid my check it's in the mail that is so good i love that Rose uh, I, I love uh, <laughs> it i love when he he turns around looks at him and goes if we're not back by dawn call the president <laughs> 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 call I, the love, president. I love the part where he says I'm a reasonable guy, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. Yeah, so I wrote that down. Gives it like that grasp, that grasp of like reality of where he's like, I'm just a normal guy, just trying to survive this like whack show. 
off. <laughs> Screw I mean, too. mine are simple. Like, um, can, the elevator was just like, I'm not scared at all. Like, it's just so out of nowhere. <laughs> just like, okay. just like it's, what? <laughs> I, I, I love when they're explaining things to him and, and he says, uh, one of the um, guys telling him like what's going on. He's like, China is here. And he's like, I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> 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 I love Jack Burton. There's great too where he he's telling him, he's just like, I don't get this at all. I thought low pan and he goes, shut up, Mr. Burton. You are not brought up upon this world to get it. I love low pan's character, by the way. Like, it's just like, oh, and to take over the world. And he goes, as we know it. And he's just like, indeed. And he goes, or check into a psych ward, whichever one comes first. <laughs> I love that. And then, oh my gosh, there's the creepiest moment when when Lopan is like looking at, yeah, I will marry both women. And then he like puts his hand out to Gracie Lottie. He's just like, dig it, dig it, go. He's like, it's so disturbing. And she like tries to bite him. And he's like, ah! <laughs> he like freaks out. Like, so funny. Oh my gosh, that's great. And then uh, I really like his line at the very end. He's just like, we really shook the pillars of heaven, didn't we, Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> no horseshoes, Jack? No horseshoes. It's so great. Like The only line that I can remember oh that didn't... I can only remember it because it made so little sense to me is when he's talking into his radio at the beginning and he's like, I tell my wife, you know, I can never drive faster than I see. And I'm... <laughs> yeah, he says, I remember like, thinking like a, about that for a couple minutes. Besides, like, it's all in the reflexes. It and that there was nothing to dissect because it doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, I just had a that reminded me test when he's sitting there and after he talks to Le Pan, check into a psych ward, he leans forward and he's like speaking to Le Pan, he goes, Are you crazy? Is that your problem? <laughs> oh my gosh, I freaking love he's that. He's never line. flustered. He's never flustered throughout the whole movie until he's yes. like up against Gracie Law's body or whatever. I guess nothing else phases him besides like <laughs> yeah. the adoration and attention of a woman. I uh, I love. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, go go. Oh, I was just gonna say he's like son of B must pay. <laughs> that was really good. I also love the part where Gracie's talking to him, and then she's like, she's like she's talking to Jack, and she says, "I'd go with you, but." And then Jack Burton responds like, I know, there's a problem with your face. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. That's a good line. <laughs> your problem with your face. Ruthless. Or you know what he says? Yeah, he's like, low pan? And he's like, yeah, tall guy, weird clothes, first you see him, then you don't. Like, oh my gosh. I he love just it. doesn't and, Oh, and then another great line is when, when he comes in, she goes, what do you have? He goes, oh, I got, I got this. And he goes, you have a knife? That guy is 11 feet tall. He goes, seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> like, calm down, all right? Yeah, calm down. He's only seven feet. Oh, that's feet. hilarious. Like, like, Sides, I got this. He's got a knife. Oh my gosh, so funny. Oh it's like, it funny because he like carried the knife in his mouth, I think, for about 80% of the movie. And it's like he didn't use it other than at the very end. That was like the only time he actually really used it. Dude, what is, like, <laughs> you know what Gracie Law reminded me a lot of? Like every girl character in every Indiana Jones movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why we so love this. I did kind of have a feel to Indiana Jones. I never thought of that. Where, like, the second one, I think it's, uh, what's it called? Uh, what's that one called? Temple, Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. Uh, Temple yeah, of Doom. when right, when right. she sticks her hand in like with all the bugs, like that's the type of character that I just like imagine with Gracie Law. Like that, she's just that type of girl. I thought Gracie Law was a bit more bad than that chick, but little. But oh my gosh, there's a great scene too. I just thought of when they're like climbing through the sewers the first time, and then this creature comes out of the wall and just <laughs> yeah. eats a guy, and he's just like. Throw, he throws like a pebble or something and like or a bomb and it goes off and he goes you will come out no more and then he goes what huh what will come out no more and he's just like and the next time like come on and he goes <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we just lost a guy that is such a great scene I freaking love that there's oh my so gosh. much stuff like that that so offers good. like why is this here there's no context as to where did this creature come from what is it it just <laughs> happens. And then you're just left wondering like him, just like, what the hell? <laughs> like, this guy just got tra- right. eaten and dragged into the wall and you throw a flashbang in there and it's like, oh, we good. Like, this happens every weekend. Like, <laughs> what? 
Oh my gosh. What does that mean, huh? China is here. I don't even know what the exactly. that means. Exactly. Right? Like, China's China here. here. Oh my gosh. I love it too. It's just like, oh my gosh. No, please. What is that? Don't tell me. He's like, a guardian. It sees what, what it sees. Lopan knows. I love it. Like, I, they always explain the things to him, and you kind of get it on context, or basically you're kind of already sucked in at that point. But I love his reaction to everything. You know, you gotta be freaking kidding. It's so great. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah, there, there's just so many. And a lot of them are coming up from. You know, there's, Jack. I mean, he he delivers. And a lot there's of the a lot of really lines, good but... uh, visual humor too. He's like, the coast is clear, and then they they open the door, and there's like a, a ton of guards, <laughs> and he slams it. <laughs> they did a good job with that. The visual humor is on point. Oh, you know what? Mao Yin does have a line. I'm looking through the quotes here. There's a line from Mao Yin. She goes, I don't belong to you. And then Lopan's like, you don't. You belong to Ching Dai. I must sacrifice you, but I love you and I need you. And she goes, no. And he goes, oh, yeah. take her. Okay, take yeah. Her. <laughs> well, it's like you never see her say the line. That's all off camera, but you do hear it. I remember the take. Uh, that's, right. yeah. that, that's, that's when she's sneaking in. Yeah, they're listening in. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's really uh, great. I love that. Oh, <laughs> Take the B. Oh, I'm sorry. I love when they say the B word. Oh, it's horrible. That's true. That's my favorite word. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's horrible. So funny. Okay. Well, does anyone have any other quotes that you can think of? Oh, one last great one, too. I can't remember. Is it when he. When does he say it? But he's just like, we made it! Holy sh! We made it! <laughs> like, it's so great. He delivers it when they either get out of the. When does he say it? No, I just they, remember that's him, when like, they first so escape ecstatic. when uh, Gracie Law gets taken yes, by yeah, the, monster, the, bus, they get in the yes. bus. Yeah, Egg Shen's bus. Like, yeah. yeah, they're in the bus. And he's just like, holy sh! Yes, we made it! That's a great <laughs> line. Like, like, I can't believe it. And then they lose the Gracie, right? She gets captured. But, because no, she's an idiot. And, like, it. the thing opens and she, like, goes and, like, leans in and looks into the thing that opened in front of her. And then the stupid werewolf thing grabs her. <laughs> Which is another thing. Like, okay, you see the eyes change. You're like, whatever, you know. It's low pan. He's going to grab someone. Cool. No, it's a big furry werewolf arm that comes out. <laughs> it's just this random thing. Oh, my gosh. I love it. And uh, there, there's great. Oh my gosh, there's there's so many. Don't panic. It's only me, Gracie Law. <laughs> uh, she had she had some redeemable moments, right? That's great. Oh my gosh. If you have a problem like that again, just reach for the sky. <laughs> Are you googling these quotes? Because that's cheating. <laughs> I, I had written them. I had written some of them down. Oh, okay. Yes, I I've seen this movie more times than you okay. have. Okay. I, I was so, just gonna yeah, say they don't count them. as memorable if you're having to Google them. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Every, every single quote. Right. Yeah. But uh, we are now going to move on to the next well, segment. Just, unless it, you guys have well, any I thought it was thoughts. just recommend. Would you recommend it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The next segment, Jordan, is would you recommend this film? Take it easy, all right? Jordan, why don't you start? Would you recommend well, this Well, obviously. I do think people should watch Army of Darkness first if you haven't seen that, and then watch this film right after. <laughs> do a double feature. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Which Cameron just did, didn't you? You just watched Army of Darkness and this movie. It's, it's, quite, it's quite the experience, that's for sure. Oh, my gosh, it's a full night. <laughs> I think... No. I think if you want to really enjoy it, get a group of people, get your medicinal marijuana card, and then watch it, and I think you'll have a really great evening. <laughs> Without all that, it's a weird movie. I mean, you've got to be in the mood for just a real weird movie, <laughs> but I do recommend. I think everyone should see it just because it does have so many like, just crazy what the hell <laughs> moments that like you got to fall in love with. And... and... <laughs> Yeah, I, I would recommend this to a very select few, but if you do like this film, you should also check out, obviously, Army of Darkness and Good Burger, but then you need to check out Journey to the West. This is like Journey to the West, like, almost identical, <laughs> just like, just as confusing, just as weird, but Journey to the West, the first scene is beautiful. And it's got a lot of the cheesy practical effects from Willow. It feels a lot like Willow, too. Yeah, it does have, and anything like starring Kurt Russell, but yeah, for me, it does have a feeling, it, it's almost like... Like, it's so crazy that John Carpenter can direct something like this and then turn around and make the thing remake because you have, like, I mean, you have 
Kurt Russell, but like totally serious. And yet he's being somewhat serious in this movie, but he's playing the action hero. It's just a completely different vibe. I don't know how, that's like a skill director in my opinion. So I definitely recommend this film. I think hands down, this is probably one of those guilty pleasures that I have that'll just be an important part of my identity forever. So definitely recommend this it's film. Cool. Anyone should see it. It's, did it's did Tess fun. say it's, whether or not she'd recommend fun. it to people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I want to hear from I you too. I didn't say yet, did I? No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was We're hoping maybe I could fly you. under the radar. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend it, but then again, this is not really my genre either. <laughs> I'm kind of like, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Colton likes to make fun of me because I like to watch dramas and I like to watch like you know I like to watch more serious movies or if I do watch a comedy I like for it to be like quite a dark comedy so it's just not really my genre but if you're looking for a really goofy whoa, comedy, whoa, whoa, slow down a mystical action adventure comedy kung fu monster ghost story isn't that genre? Genre? that, that, that literally every scene is mysterious and it doesn't make any sense it doesn't fall under the umbrella of the Sounds kind like of movie all that I would category. normally go for <laughs> Do I feel as though I've evolved as a person because I've seen this movie? No. <laughs> Would I recommend this movie? No. But am I glad I saw it purely because I get to have a conversation about how ridiculous it was? Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Hey, that that's the whole goal of this podcast, yeah, really. You know, like, like, hidden movie gems, man. Like I said. Like, like your life, you're, yeah, are you a better person? No. <laughs> but maybe in some small way, your life will be a forever changed. You know, it's left its mark on you. Maybe you'll forget about it in a few years, and then later you'll you'll end up quoting it down the road, and you'll be like, oh, that was That's that true, movie. that's true. I, that I do think, time. you know, it'll create some positive, there will be some positive memories of the movie down the road, Um, you know. It's not not a movie that I would necessarily <laughs> recommend, um, but I, you know, I'm still. I would say that I'm relatively glad that I watched it. it, it <laughs> uh, I'm good. I'm glad to yeah. hear that. Colton, how about you? Would you recommend this? Oh, one? like I said, if if you're in any state or have access to legal marijuana, you know, I highly recommend <laughs> it. I think that'd be a great time. If not, you this gotta is the be. Movie. You, you gotta be. Yeah, it's gotta be up your alley. Like I love goofy stuff like this. I think it's hilarious because anything with good one-liners, like I love. Yes. So I would recommend it, but I would highly recommend it if you're in a legal state. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, how about you? Would you recommend this film? Yeah, I said I would recommend it to a, uh, we, a select we all went. few. Yeah. A select few. Nice. We end every podcast. We end every podcast about discussing movies that we've seen recently and movies that you were looking forward to watching. So, Colton and Tess, we'll let you guys go first. Well, we just watched Game Night uh, for the first time the other night, and that yes! was fantastic. Jason really Bateman? Funny, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love that, that movie. One. I love I love the awkward neighbor oh, police yes. guy. Yes. He is so funny. Gary or whatever. Tostitos. <laughs> the blood, the blood on That's the a lot of Tostitos oh, for just the two of you. It's like, yeah, there's a three for one deal. the dog. <laughs> It was yeah, that was a wild ride just full of fun. Like I It's an underrated comedy for sure. I think that it was oh, actually really it, good. So Rachel McAdams stellar comedy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> amazing and she She's does. got a funny bone for sure. Jason Bateman also is great and uh, yeah, that was a fun fun. Well, movie. I okay. Uh anything else you guys What about how how do you guys feel about thrillers? Because Love. I saw a thriller recently that I thought was pretty good. It's called I See You. And it's yes. on Amazon Prime right now. Yes. It's a good one, isn't it's it? It's really good. It was good. really good. I mean, there were a couple. Of, Which ones I, I see? I see you from like 2019. That I like think. frog mask? Yes, with the frog mask. Oh, the frog. Yes, where the frog, where they live yes, in someone's home without them knowing in it. Somebody's home. Yes. Yes. yes that I one was so that. good. There were like it. a couple parts in that movie where I was like, wait, I think I might be missing something here. Because there were like one or two loose ends that. I thought weren't quite tied up by the end, but besides that, it was really well done. I thought it was a great movie. I'm actually going to watch it again soon. So I would highly recommend that one to anyone who's looking to watch a good thriller. That's, that's a great this one. Halloween season. It's great. Great to see Helen Hunt. It's great to see Helen Hunt in a movie. Yeah, again. she was you know, really good in it. Long time for anything. She's great. Sells it for me. And uh, yeah, that's a good one. I love that one. I actually thought you were. I I was mistaking that one for. I think it was Hush. Hush is good too. Girl. 
that's another that's, good I one, like but I thought that's too. what it was. I can't, I don't I can't see or I don't see. It was one, you was, know, it's one of those like, like sensory deprivation movies which were really like trendy for a while in movies, but I think it was like right. at the forefront of that. So I still think that it's a really right, creative right, yeah. movie. <laughs> it's not as like big of a blockbuster as like uh, what's that movie? Don't breathe or something. Bird or, Box? The, no, not Don't Breathe. Yeah, well, yeah, Bird Box is the the failed and, version oh, and, of what's um, the one with John Krasinski? Yes. You can't hear the oh, quiet, quiet, one. Quiet, quiet, place. quiet place. I couldn't, quiet think, place. I couldn't even think of the movie. You're right. Yeah. So quiet place. Yeah. Like the quiet. That what one was works the, really what well. Was like the knockoff like quiet place version, with the weird but, crow things. Bird Box, wasn't it? No. The Bird is Box bird is where box? they can't look at the box. thing. Sandra Bullock. Oh, oh, oh the, it was the really yeah, bad one right. with um with uh, Stanley Tucci, who I really like, but the movie was kind of a disaster. It's a similar thing where it's like, oh, some cave gets opened and these weird sonic hearing bird bat things like come out and it's like, oh, you gotta be quiet or else they come and eat you. And so... Wait, was that The Descent? No, it was, like the a, Descent it was on or... Netflix for oh, a while okay. and it kind of tanked because it was a terrible knockoff <laughs> of The Quiet Place. Even though it's like, the book I'm pretty sure was written beforehand, but just like, you can't put it out like two months after A Quiet Place because it's the same movie, basically. (laughs) Right, like creatures that hear really well. That's funny. I don't don't know that one. Yeah. uh, I'm I'm Googling it right now. I love that you guys have seen all these thrillers. I love them. I I love thrillers. Well, I'm I'm a big fan of thrillers, and sometimes I can get Colton to watch them with me, so. Colton, do you not not like thrillers? Do they they unnerve you? I do. It's more just like... I like like crime thrillers and stuff. Like one of my favorites is The Bone Collector, old classic. The Bone Collector oh, is an dear. awesome oh, movie. Dang. The Silence, that's what it's <laughs> yeah, called. Silence. The Silence. Go watch it, dude. <laughs> I've never heard that. One. I mean, it's it not, not good. Up, yeah, it's not great. It if wasn't you're looking terrible. For a, but... Kind of a crappy thriller to watch. Is it so bad it's good though? Crappy thrillers. No, no, it's just kind of like <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> Because it's trying too yeah. hard to be a quiet place. And uh, actually, the book yeah. that The Silence is based on came out, I think, before A Quiet Place. But A Quiet Place just did, like, the cinematic version so much better than The mm-hmm. Silence did. So right. I really like Stanley okay. Tucci, and he's in that movie. But the movie itself is it's not that good. So Got it. Okay. Awesome. Uh, well, awesome. Any other films that you guys are looking forward to, perhaps? Uh, something that's on your radar that you're looking forward to seeing? I think mm-hmm. A Quiet Place 2 is supposed to come out soon, isn't it? I, I don't know back with the, the release dates. of everything after Tenet didn't do so well. Yeah, they're pushing well, back every movie saying, probably like, into I'm next year. I'm not even year, sure what's but, coming out right, right. now because everything's so up in the air. Right. But... But no, but I'd love to hear that. Yeah, Quiet Place. When I saw it had Killen Murphy, I was sold. I mean, ever since his, it, it's like restarting a film with Killen Murphy, very much akin to like Twenty Eight Days Later. Like, mm. right? It, I mean, it's this after a post apocalyptic world. He lives in this dystopian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not yeah. a dystopian, but I mean, yeah, like a ravaged world. I love that post apocalyptic feel, and it did look really good. I can't, and they even get to see some of the outbreak when they first arrived. I love that. Like, I was so excited to Which see that one. Which one is too, that? What's that called? The, the sequel, A Quiet Place 2. Oh, 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 yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully someday soon, but yeah, I, I was looking forward to that one as oh, well. Oh, but you're so. talking about 28 Days Later, is that what you were asking? Oh, sorry, yeah, I was referencing 28 Days Later that also has Killen Murphy. Highly recommend it, it's a great zombie flick, probably one of the top five zombie films of all time. It's, it's so Yeah, good. if you ever wonder actually... why Jordan always talks about gouging on people's eyes, just watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good, though, you guys. I recommend that one. Um... So, uh, Jordan or, or, or uh, Tess Colton, any other movies you guys like to recommend? We want to honor your oh. time. If you guys have to bounce out now, that's um, if you like. Well, if you them. like kind of a, again, kind of a dark comedy. I'm sorry, I'm such a one note wonder. I really. Oh, I love dark comedy. <laughs> movies that are kind of bleak no, we, we are love... like so my jam. Have you but... seen Seven Psychopaths? That's a great dark comedy. No, oh, no, so I haven't seen that one. Have you seen Paddleton? Uh, I don't think so. It's on Netflix right now. I, it's so, all I all I could think is Paddington. No, it's no, not no. the bear, it's not the, the sweet <laughs> little bear, so the, the bear. English, yeah. the UK bear. Not exactly at the okay, same alley okay. as Paddington. It's it's spelled P A D T friendly and respectful. P A D D L E T O N, and it has Paddington. um it actually has Ray Romano in it, and then it has Mark okay. Duplass who is the guy from the League and also from the movie Creep. But anyway, it's Creep's like, a good one if you've never Ooh, seen Creep. I need to see Creep. I haven't seen it yet. Creep is pretty good. Creep is is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's just a movie about two adult guys. They're both bachelors, and they're really close friends, and they're not, like, your textbook definition of, like, successful guys, but they have a really great friendship between them. And it's, like, 
very dark content in the movie, but it's still what I would categorize as a comedy. So I would recommend it to anybody who's looking to watch a dark comedy. Have you seen, have you seen In Bruges? Is that how you say it? In Bruges. In Bruges. No, I it's haven't another, seen that one. It's another dark comedy. So good. Confer. Is I mean, it? I kind of saw it somewhere. I don't oh, okay. remember where, but I haven't seen it yet. So. Okay. And this is why it, I don't a, watch movies with her, because everything's depressing as hell. It's just like... <laughs> I love dark comedies. <laughs> Tess, Tess, I'm the same way. I love movies that are like super messed up. Like, and I think it's because I don't have a lot of empathy. <laughs> and obviously, I oh, no I am removed. Okay. okay, but I am removed. I am removed from movies though because I know that they're like actors are getting paid to do this, and it's so so. I had to see like a really depressing character to be like, oh, they have a really crappy life, yeah. you know, like. But so so like for the for me like the 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 Hallmark Christmas movies it just doesn't oh do it for God. me because it's like yeah obviously they end up together like the whole rom com formula uh-huh. where it's like the two people that don't like each other they end up liking each other and everything's fine at the end it's like I kind of like a movie where yeah you Some watch it like what the happens. heck the, the guy yeah. didn't win yeah yeah the guy didn't win at the end or or you have a character that's really flawed like I mean movies that are up my alley you know uncut gems and things like that like really stressful good time oh have you guys seen lighthouse that's another good like yes that's a messed up one that one was disturbing actually Uh, at the end of that movie i I was like what did i just watch (laughs) but that it it did give me more it did give me more respect for uh robert pattinson as an actor yes oh my gosh that movie was like it was one okay (laughs) sorry i'm going off on a bit of a tangent here but if you guys are looking for really bleak horror movies kind of similar to you know just the lighthouse like that bleakness the when you get to the end of the movie you're like there's no hope left in the world watch possum <laughs> oh yeah i was gonna say they should check out that one oh, that, that one's movie is so weird. messed up it's so possum? messed up yes oh, okay. it's it's a horror it's a but british it's not horror, your it's a it? british horror and oh. it's not your typical it's very Ooh. art house you know how they have like the art house movement with horror movies right now it's very art house, and you don't really understand what's happening by the end until the end. It's a very slow burn, but uh, if you want a movie that's gonna leave you reeling a little bit, watch Possum. Okay. So. All right, I'll look it up. I, I I gotta be honest. My new horror film, yeah, are these these long drawn out ones with the dread. Like, did you guys ever see either Hereditary or Somerset? Oh, it's not Hereditary. Hereditary. Or, 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 not Somerset. Mid- Midsummer. Sorry, not Somerset. It's Midsummer. Right? We haven't seen Midsummer, Midsummer. but I've, I I know everything about Midsummer. that one. We know that it's really quite gory, which <laughs> isn't necessarily my thing. I don't like gore so much, but I do love Hereditary mostly yeah. because I love Tony Collette. So. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, I am desensitized, but it just just to its credit, there is a few definitely very gory things but it's not like the slasher flicks like it's not like how do i say that it's not excessive but i sound like a crazy person when i say that because <laughs> no it's about as excessive as hereditary but, but, really yeah oh yeah I mean, right. yeah it, it's it's more. not it's not a like, gore i know fe- yeah. i know yeah, it's enough. not a it's gore like, fest. hereditary guy has like one or two like midsummer kind of has a few pretty shocking ones and then a Ooh, few of like okay so a, a great one a great one that i think you guys might like that was really sleek uh was invisible man did you guys i've been wanting one? to watch that and i can't get him oh. to watch it with me he oh, he made promises and now he it's, like, it it's shocking me, so. but i i honestly don't find it as scary at all i just love it i just think it's a great movie so just just watch it if that works because if you don't like the scare part of no, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's a very it's, it's a it's very tame horror film horror it's like it's it's thriller it's it's actually like a sci-fi drama so wait are you ta- you saw midsummer camera yeah, so go see it for sure no i thought you were talking about invisible man i'm sure oh invisible man sorry sorry yeah invisible man yeah invisible man yes i've so been I wanting to watch that, that one so <laughs> for well, sure. feel free go ahead Stop and dragging your feet cold. <laughs> go ahead and watch it <laughs> Well, Colton, there's crime in it too. There's policemen and everything. Oh, they you know? got. Do they have the cool <laughs> uniforms and badges and everything? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get to see policemen? Oh. Yeah, they, do they get to use their guns. Sometimes <laughs> you know that reminds me. Of, it reminds me of a Christmas story when that kid is looking out the window. The kid licked the pole and his tongue stuck out. He goes, "Wow, it's the firemen! <laughs> wow, it's the cops!" <laughs> like, oh that's no. <laughs> Oh, wow. Now that's one. If you guys do that over the oh, holidays, gosh. like let me know because I would love to talk about that one. My favorite Christmas, Christmas story movie of all oh, time. That's so great. That's so great. Well, guys, thanks so much for being on the pod. You guys can stick around or bounce anytime you want. We're just gonna go around and say movies that we've seen lately and movies that we're looking forward to. So, uh, do you guys have any 
social media that you wanted no, to plug or, we do or nothing you know, things media. that are going on? Really, like, um, I guess if you want to add me on LinkedIn, go for it because I'm looking yeah. for connections. Right Got to hit that 500 connection mark to get that free premium. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving soon, so I need a job. So add me on LinkedIn. All right, there you go, LinkedIn. You know, um, that's great. Tess, Colton, thank you guys so much for being on the podcast. We yeah, really thanks for, having, for us. having us. This it's was been fun. fun. <laughs> Such a delight. And thanks for uh, letting us torture you with this movie, <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys need to bounce, go ahead. But we're just going to go around and say movies that we've seen lately and movies that we're looking forward to. Uh, Jordan, why don't you start us off? Uh, I just – I haven't finished, but I've been watching um, – oh, what's that show called with uh, – I know it. Uh, I don't know it. Oh, Eastbound and Down. <laughs> and uh, there's just a few really good moments. Like, they have all these amazing actors in it. Um, it so it's got, what's the guy from, um, uh, Danny McBride. So, and then it's also got uh, Daryl from The Office. And there's a part where he throws a ball so hard it knocks out his eye. Anyways, it's just a really weird, crazy show. <laughs> it's really funny. It's about a, a washed up baseball player that, uh, you know, tries to get back into the league and then decides he chooses a girl over the league and then he starts to regret it later on. And it's just it's really funny. But um, there's one there's one moment where Judd Apatow directs an episode and it's hilarious. And Will Ferrell ties in it as well. And Will Ferrell. He, yeah. Will oh, Ferrell really? uh, works at a, a, um, a car. What is it? A, um, dealership. Thank you. A dealership. And um, he works at a, like a really nice dealership, but then they smash up all the cars and stuff. And so he gets put back into like a really crappy dealership in the next episode. And he's like, he's like, oh, so how's the new dealership doing? And he's like, how do you think I'm doing? It's like, I work at effing Kia. <laughs> 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 it's really funny. Anyways. Um, and then. Uh, oh, and, Ty, and, then, and then he quotes. Um, I'm going to edit this out of the podcast. It's really inappropriate, but it's really funny. He, he quotes um, uh, Requiem for a Dream. He's like, I feel like that scene at the end of the movie when those chicks have to... Are, are, are sick. And he's like, and I'm the... <laughs> I'm cutting that out, but it was just really funny. Holy I gosh. Love. I do not understand your obsession with Requiem for a Dream, George. Oh, I love that movie. It, I've seen that classic. movie so many times. Yes, thank yeah, you. It's, just, it's a classic. It's weird as all... <laughs> But it is Cameron. We're doing that on the podcast because it, it's on VidAngel. Oh, so we're gonna watch it. Oh boy. I don't know what you edit. There'd be no movie. Left. It'd be like five but seconds. But it's a masterpiece. It'd be, like, it'd be like a scene of him. It'd be like a scene of his pupil like shrinking or enlarging, right? And then that's it. That's. But then you can't even get context for that because he's popping drugs and or popping weight. <laughs> oh, so high. good. That movie. Um, was and then I watched a classic, um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, no, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. So good, dude. I. F- Are you sure it wasn't the one with Johnny Depp? That classic, oh, the instant classic that when it dropped, everyone just misunderstood <laughs> no. it. That class star. Shine says hello. Oh, that movie's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but there was one there was one funny scene that made me laugh. For some reason it gets my funny bone when he's walking and there's all these flags like montaging behind him, like like faded in the background. And you think he's like traveling across the world. He's in a flag store. And then all of a sudden the He's like at a flag museum, and this guy's like, "Hey, kid, you gotta get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> I just that love that funny. scene. Yeah. That's so great. That was funny. It had nothing to do with but the whole story. I had forgotten really because I hadn't seen joke. it for so long. The scene where Willy Wonka is, um, uh, shoot, what happened? Um, oh, sorry. At the very beginning, when they're trying to find out where the golden tickets are, and the guy's like entering it into the computer, and he's like, and the computer tells, he's like, it, it, the computer will tell me exactly where the the last choco bar is, and it won't tell him. And then he's he's like, well, but you can win a lifetime supply of chocolate. And then the computer's like, what would I do with the lifetime supply of chocolate? And he's like, I'll tell you what you can do with the lifetime supply of chocolate. <laughs> it was really good. Anyways. That's really funny. That's, that's pretty much it. And then I've just started a few TV shows. I've watched... Also, let's talk about that candy man at the beginning who just throws candy at kids without any thought to charge them for the <laughs> yeah. candy they're eating. Like, who just inexplicably comes in and he just you know? throws He doesn't care. <laughs> the candy man. <laughs> He's the candy man. Kind uh, um, makes the uh, world taste good. I love the music. It's so good. There okay, and then the last thing I was going to say is I watched the newest episode of South Park, and the best part about it is because they're talking about this pandemic or whatever you want to call it. Um, going on right now, and they they call. 
this pandemic or fake, fake news, fake, whatever the bull crap is. <laughs> and then he's like, um, he, he, they talk about like how different people wear masks differently. And he, he says the people that don't put it over their nose, he calls it a chin diaper. So the whole episode is about the people <laughs> and their chin diapers. It's so funny. <laughs> really funny. I saw Jordan. I saw I saw chin the scene diapers. where the, the, the uh, police officer <laughs> starts shooting him in the classroom. That's pretty funny. Uh, it, what? And oh what is that from? Gosh, that's... It's like South a, Park. Yeah, it's like Kyle and Cartman are fighting, and then the police start shooting, but they start shooting at Token. <laughs> <He's> like, <"Yeah, laughs> that's right. <got> it. <laughs> oh I forgot about gosh, that. I thought they were going to address that, but they just went right over it like it was nothing. That was crazy. Oh, I know. It was. They they really hit everything going on. It's it's a great episode. Oh yeah, For South sure. Park fears nobody. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, anything else, Jordan, that you're looking forward uh, to? Is something coming out in the theaters? Oh, uh, yes. Um, it's called Wolf in Snow Hollow. Um, it's the same guy that did Thunder Road. Are you sure you're not going to see Unhinged no, again? No, no, oh, no. So they're, they're, um, the same guy that did Thunder Road is directing this movie, and he's really good. Um, I'm so excited. It comes out this weekend. I'm going to go see it. Well, it says it's select theaters, so I... I I tried to get tickets early, but... Oh, you know what I got tickets to that I'm excited to see, Ty? Memories of Murder. It's the same guy that did Parasite. Oh, really? Bong Joon-ho. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, Have you guys cool. seen that yet? Yeah, Parasite's good. Oh, so good. Parasite's good. That's a good one. Um, awesome. Well, I, uh, I actually... I was busy this week. I watched a few good movies, so... Um, after we did our episode of Army of Darkness, I watched Cooties, uh, starring Elijah Wood, and... Rain Wilson and Al- 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 so Al- funny. It's a really cuties funny. Or cuties, because if you watch Cuties, then I'm like, that's a whole other oh, no. level. This of is like, the second. Eh. Yeah, this I is the watched second that time. too. Uh, right. oh, that's so funny. That no, I didn't watch Cuties. No. What? I, did not watch I thought that's why cuties. you deleted Netflix. Is because you watched it. Oh, well, I deleted Netflix, but I didn't need to watch it. Like, I don't need to watch a movie about child pornography to know it's about child pornography. <laughs> nor do I need to justify why I canceled my Netflix account because on your platform you were soliciting child pornography, but whatever, that's beside the point. No, the movie called Cooties, it stars Elijah Wood, Rain Wilson, and Allison Pill, and it, it's a movie about kids that contract a zombie virus, basically, that from this nasty... Dr- that chicken? chicken? Oh, my gosh. So, that beginning when she takes a bite into that nugget, there's, like, green pus coming out of the chicken nugget. It is so it's gross. so funny. She freaking eats it. So it spreads like a zombie. It's like a zombie outbreak with like a bunch of kids. It's watching it during a pandemic was actually even more effective now because. But that beginning is hilarious, isn't it? Oh my gosh. It's it's actually pretty. It's a funny dark comedy. I think you might enjoy it. If you like zombie movies at all, it's kind of a different take on it. Um, it doesn't do too much with it, but it, it's it's pretty fun. I, I enjoyed it, and it's pretty funny. It's fun to see Rain Wilson outside of his element it not being Dwight for for a change you know he's always Dwight Schrute he'll always be Dwight Schrute but it's kind of fun to see him uh, as a different character but Elijah Wood's always funny uh so that was a fun one not funny, and that's funny is a strange word I would use cuties. for Elijah Wood I don't know if I would use the word funny I would say uncomfortable <laughs> to the point of laughter maybe Cameron I need to send you an interview I need to send you Oh no! I'll have to send you that interview, that prank they pulled on him in Lord of the Rings. Uh, Pippin called him up. Uh, have you seen that video, Cameron? No. Where they prank call Elijah Wood? Oh, I'll I'll send it to you afterwards. It's so great. Uh, I also watched a little something called a General Conference, which was pretty amazing. Like eight hours of my my weekend. It's great. Uh, it, was a, it was a great. Uh, just messages from the Church of Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints. It was really fun. Uh, and then I watched um, Late Night, which is a movie starring Mindy Kaling and Emma Thompson. Pretty fun movie. It's a story about late night television and and uh, the writing and a lot of that. It's kind of a movie for the writers. I enjoyed it. Kind of kind of played a little bit into the rom com. So that stuff I didn't really care for. But Emma Thompson, as always, is such a delight. She is one of the few actresses out there that could like demands a presence. She was great. Um, and then I watched a surprising movie called The Devil All the Time. This was an unnerving drama. It was actually really good. I, I actually enjoyed it. Um, although. One of my saddest parts is that I, the Dudley character, I always call him Dudley, from Harry Potter, Dudley. He's like the best part in it, and he's not in the movie enough. He was by far the best part in it. He also played a small role in the uh, that five-part series that the Coen brothers directed, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. He was the limbless guy. That's Dudley, man. Can you believe it? He also played the villain in the movie I just watched with Charlize Theron called The, the Last Guard, or The Old Guard, The Old Guard. 
He he's been great. He's always appearing as these villains. He's probably getting typecasted now, but he is excellent. I think he's he wasn't a, a villain actor, when he was a stub for a person in Ballad of Buster Scrubs. Well, no, true, but I mean the real villain was, like was Liam Neeson person, in so. that movie. Jeez. <laughs> you mean the fact that he like threw this limbless person <laughs> off his wagon, probably left him to starve to death or freeze to death? Oh my gosh! Yeah, for a chicken, probably. Um, <laughs> so the devil all the time. For a chicken. <laughs> So, uh, so great performance also from Robert Pattinson. It's got our boy Robert Pattinson. So the devil all the time was pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but again, needed to have more Dudley. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I think that's it as far as movies that I watched. Um, I watched The Little Mermaid too. So, uh, not The Little Mermaid too, but I watched The Little Mermaid also. And what's great is the the creators of this. They were watching the ending. They had an ending where like basically the king like does away with the sea witch. But they had just watched the, some of the creators or the storyboarders or whoever, like animators, they went and watched Die Hard in the theater and they're like, oh, this ending was bad A. And they're like, we need to have a more of a bad A ending for Little Mermaid. So they literally rewrote the ending where Eric drives the ship into the sea witch and like stabs her and <laughs> impales her on that like jaggedy piece of wood. So they rewrote that ending because of Die Hard. So we have to, it, you know, and I'll be honest, it's it's pretty graphic for a kid's movie where it literally pierces through her and you see it stab her like through. Goodness. I forgot about that. But that's what makes the movie test, great, but, you know? Got yeah. some action. But it does, yeah. It, it, it's cool to kind of see Eric come in because Little Mermaid's always saving his butt. Like, he's pretty clueless. He's par- he's, he's hypnotized through the whole movie, so he kind of gets one chance to, to pull a little stunt. So, anyway. Uh, and it is kind of a fun, climactic ending, right? She grows giant. It's like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And Anyway, I just thought that was really funny that that whole ending was procured because the people involved in the movie were like, Die Hard just came out this weekend. Did you guys see Die Hard? Like, we gotta change this little sissy movie, Little Mermaid. Like, we gotta make this awesome. Like, and they're probably like, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is the Little Mermaid. We're not making Die Hard, okay? This is not Die Hard Under the Sea, you know? Like, I just love hearing stories like that. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, our movie was forever changed because of it. So, fun little history there. Anyway, that's that's all I've seen this week. Uh, other than The Boys season two, I'm oh, caught yes. up on all the episodes. I'm not yet. Don't, but, uh, no spoilers. We have episode. Yeah, we won't. We won't. Cameron no hasn't caught up. Yeah, have you caught up yet? Season to come out. Dude, I have watched. Uh, not until the whole season's. I've watched, I think, four or five episodes of the new season, and holy fudge, my brain yeah. is exploding. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, Colt. It's, 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 it's a great Colton, show. What, how far did you get in? Real quick. How far did you get? Let's see, I just watched episode four, so I'm on episode five. Okay, so Cameron's same episode spot. Five. Dude, episode three okay. was amazing. Okay, so wait, so wait, Cole, what was so, the last thing that you saw? Oh, I just want to make ahead. sure, because I might have gotten to six or five. Last thing... Oh God, well, well three was three was when they ran right into that well. Dude, and then that again. was so funny. <laughs> I was literally dying laughing. <laughs> I think well, I maybe I maybe that. was that three? I thought that was Butcher. four. <laughs> no, that's three. Dude, dude, oh, that maybe was I've so only funny. watched <laughs> up to three because that's. I mean, that was pretty recent with what we watched. Yeah, and then they break like, that guy's arms. Yeah. yeah, it's like we saw that, and then it's like we just kind of introduced Liberty in like yep. the whole like Liberty Stormfront, and then like the oh snap, like what's going on, and that's where we're at right now. Okay, yep. She is oh, okay. bad, at, dude. I love it. Okay, the last scene that I saw ta- Jordan. Colton, you might want to take out your earbud. I don't know what episode this is. Was I, I just saw when Home when Homelander and what's her name just like pretty much like hooked up. And did they kiss friend. or what did they do? Oh yeah. No, they had like sex. Oh, you're pretty far then, I thought. Yeah, what is that? Like, yeah, he's like two episodes up. Yeah, you're good, you're good. No more saying anything. Okay, no. no more talking about. It. Um so so yeah, definitely definitely catch up on that. But yeah, I'm I'm caught up, but uh we won't talk about Cameron. spoilers at least uh until until yeah dude until just wait till you catch up, up. oh my gosh boys, but dude there's only one episode left and it comes yeah. out thursday night uh, dude that's kind of so... what i was waiting for is i wanted it all to be out so i can uh, binge the rest because i'm yeah. tired of waiting I, I, actually that's that's one last interesting discussion i wanted to have with you guys wait no we already talked about this last week do you like the whole waiting a week or do you like oh yeah, well i'm curious to ask colton do you like waiting a week or do you just have to binge it depends it on the show like you know i would be fine with the boys waiting a week but it's like I saw the first season after it had come out, so I got to binge it. And it's kind of like I don't want to wait now at the second season. <laughs> I'd rather just oh, wait and yeah. just binge it. Yeah, me too. For sure. There, there's some – yeah. Like I remember watching Better Call Saul. Each episode is just so much to unpack. That was one I enjoyed watching. Yeah, weekly, that one was good to wait. Because that's a great one to wait on. But, yeah, with, with something like The Boys – 
it, it is just like it's like popcorn you can't put down. Well, and that's you know? kind of like just, you, you know with go- want to gobble them up. That's why I'm glad I waited too so long to watch any Game of Thrones. Is because like I would get so lost if I had to wait a week. Yeah, so much crap oh, yeah. to too remember. Much. If you don't watch it back forget to back, it, right? I forget everything. Yeah, there's only I think one time you have to separate yourself from it, and that's after the red wedding. Cameron's like, I yeah. have to take a break. He's like, I can't watch another I episode. I hated life. I literally took a break. Don't from spoil it for time, but. Technology yeah. for a day. I was like, my life is a lie. My because because Rob is my favorite. <laughs> no, no, okay, yeah, don't say anything. Yeah, Ty hasn't seen it. Oh, Ty. <laughs> Rob is my favorite character. Oh, wait. So you mean he dies after the red <laughs> no, wedding? Oh, something he I'm does. Sure. I haven't seen it, but I I could pretty much guess it. But anyway, um, it's all right, Cameron. I, Ty, I Ty might never watch it anyway. Twenty four but... for me. I, I may never end up watching. It's just one of those things that's so colossal. I'm like, when am I, I going to get around to way. watching Game of Thrones? You just got to do it. You just got to bite yes. the bolt one time. <laughs> and I have swear, to. After like the first two episodes, like you're done. I like You're now so own like seven seasons on DVD. I'm sorry. I did watch the first episode. I remember thinking like, yeah, it's a great story. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe after the first few. Uh, one thing I'm looking forward to seeing Guilty Pleasure is I saw a trailer for Borat 2. I saw the trailer for Borat 2. I don't know when it's coming to theaters or coming out. I just thought that looked really I'm funny. I of, love Sasha Baron Cohen. I don't I know. I think it could be funny, but I'm seeing some backlash. And oh, I'm yeah. Wondering, I, like, I doubt. Eh. Oh, yeah. I doubt it's going to be funny at all. But to me, I just love Sasha Baron Cohen. I do too. I think he's a gift. I think he should just, he should just keep doing doing more and more things. I kind of wish it wasn't you know, Borat, you know, to be honest. I just like of, seeing what he does. He kind of reminds me of Taika. Taika Waititi? Yeah. <laughs> he's kind of just very, like, strange. He's like, I feel like Taika Waititi is like a more, like, like humanized He He is. Of... What's what's surprising is, is Sasha Baron Cohen is actually extremely intelligent, which is really funny because, you know, he seems like he's debasing themselves. But what's remarkable is that <laughs> even though I know a lot of people see Borat and they're like, oh, what's funny because, you know, he doesn't know. It's like, what's even more hilarious is that he gets people to say things on camera because they open up to him thinking he's a foreigner and that this is never going to. And, and a lot of people voice some horrendous things that they all say to someone because they don't think this is going to come back and bite them. And you're like, oh, is that what you really think? Or is that just something you say to a foreigner that doesn't understand your culture and customs? Like, it's very, very telling. And I think that that's what makes his, the, the first Borat so incredible and, and very engaging. So anyway. Um, wait, wait. So yeah, anyway, I was excited just because I love seeing anything that he does. Sasha Baron Cohen is a great... Yeah. great we, we need to wrap this up, Ty. It's a, we're hitting two hours. For sure. We, are, we have been on for too long. Everybody, uh, write in your emails, futuromovies at gmail.com. Leave us a five-star review. Push us on all your friends and your family. <laughs> Force him to did you watch have it. any last thoughts, Cameron? Sorry, Force we kind of cut listen. you off. I just want to make sure. Did you watch anything no, you're else? Good. I, I've just been watching New Girl and um, what's it called? And the boys, both. I'm liking them both really a lot so far. Okay, awesome. Thanks. I'll plug awesome. if you like a uh, good deal. Like crazy weird animes. You know, there's one on Netflix. Uh, one Punch Man. Well, I love One Punch Man, but there's one called Food Wars. That is because I love cooking, and I was like, oh yeah, something about food. It is food so. Wars effing extra dude it is so ridiculous <laughs> like you've got it's, it's one it's of those extra. like i fell in love with it just because it's so crazy so i recommend it <laughs> okay duly noted all right i'm not really one for uh for for anime but i did watch all of death note oh, which i thought was great so, well good. actually i watched half of death note. Loves death note watched half of death note all right, I gotta bounce. And then the At last tie the just. <laughs> hey, Karen, we we're all bouncing. Guys, thanks again for listening in. Uh, everybody, uh, tune in next week. We're gonna be discussing. Wait until dark. Uh, wait until dark. Oh, we're we're discussing. Wait until dark. That'll be fun. All right, everybody. Peace. Bye. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Peace.